I did a tutorial a while ago about how to place images into objects. Um, although uh, that does help, uh, somebody on the Facebook group asked how to place images into into a text, not in a, just a normal shape, into a text because the text tends to operate a bit differently to just a normal shape. Um, so let me just show you. This is the, the video I made for them. So this might be able to help you. So they had the word mommy. I'm going to just say mom makes it a bit shorter for me. So they had the word mommy and into each of the letters there was a photo of a, a baby or some relevant picture that was in there. Um, what I would suggest is if you're using any of the words, make sure you choose a font that you can thicken quite a bit like you know add bold and then it makes it nice and bold because the thickness of the image is going to be what is going to show the object through now in some cases um, this might be slightly off track but it will help in some cases you might find even though you choose a good font it's you maybe like this font but it's not thick enough the way to thicken it is to uh, go and add a stroke to it before you process it so what I would do is go to the stroke and the color and just add the same color of the actual object that you're working with. Okay, um, then we can go to stroke and with stroke you have different settings cap, join and align. Now often by default it's a line so that the stroke is on the inside and it thickens to the left and to the right. And it thickens outward and inward. If you look at the line here it's stroke. Maybe I should just change the color to red and then increase the stroke and you'll see what I mean. So if I zoom in, the stroke is thickening towards the outside and inside at the same time. So it, it kind of has a, a line and it gets thick towards the outside and inside. In this case, you just want it to go in one direction um, because if you make it go both directions, then half of the expansion is just being floating into the existing area. So this one here will be aligned to inside. If I do this, you pretty much will see that the stroke will go towards the inside and make this black area smaller. The one we want is a line stroke to the outside. So if there's the outline stroke of this letter is here, it's going to push the additional stroke on the outside. So if you thicken it, it's going to make the letter a bit thicker. So if I go here, and I start to thicken it, you see there it's going nicely and thick. So that's what you want to do. And you can't become too excessive because then it, you know, depending on how the fonts were created, it's, it could distort. So um, I'm, I'm going to show you another thing while I'm at it. If you look at these letters, if you're happy with how the curve is taking place there, then that's not a problem. If you want it to be nice and sharp, then you change the mitre here. If you change it to something like 5, anything above 5, and I'm going to press tab to to initiate that to jump from that window there you can see it's coming nice and sharp if you notice something like this with this artifacts it's probably too thick you have to dial it back a bit till it sort of fits nicely in okay so this outline is just to make it much thicker uh, it's not totally necessary if you've got a solid font that you're working with that is nice and thick in itself okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh, maybe change the color back to black. Now you see where this little thin line is, that's actually where it got thick in from that particular, that's the, the line marking the font as we're busy working. So you at least have an idea where it starts and ends. If you print this, you won't see that line. It's just a, a, a reference in the area. Okay, so say we're happy with that area. Now we've got to get this to get out of being a font because a font has a certain format built into it. Um, things that they call kerning and spacing and all that. So we need to almost break it apart. And the way to do that is to convert this font um, into just normal uh, curves, normal outlines with a full inside of it. And to do that, we have to say convert it to curves. There's different ways of doing it. You can go up to the layers and you can go click on convert to curves. You can press control enter uh, or control return, same thing. Or you could right click on it and you can say convert to curves. All does the same thing. Now when you say convert to curves, um, wait a minute, go control Z there. If you look here in the layers palette, you'll see there there's, there's text. As soon as I click on it and say convert to curves, 
you see it forms a group and if I click on this arrow you'll see in this group there's the words MOM okay now I can select all of these and drag it outside the group and then they'll be independent at the moment if I move them they're all in a group so I can select these drag it outside of the group and the group will be there and I can delete that group and then I'll have these as independence okay and I press ctrl z again and again I just want to show you that's one way of doing it the other way is just selecting on the group and you can right click and say ungroup okay there's short keys for it but ungroup so by doing that it automatically takes that almost that folder group folder takes it out of the layers and just leaves you with the independent uh, text now you are in a position similar to the other tutorial I showed where you have an outline and you're able to pop something into it so how do you do it there's probably two ways that I'm going to show you quickly the one way is working in the layers dragging things in the layers and the other is with these particular um, uh, features that you have on top here now if this is not visible over here you have to go to quickly let me go to view you can go to customize toolbar and if you click there you will see all of the features here where you're able then to take these areas and left mouse button and drag it across so if you didn't have these over here you'd have to look here and see by insertion it's called the insertion group you could click that and drag it over there but we do have it there so that should be fine the the one that you're going to go on to is say insert inside the selection so that basically hopefully that explains that you are going to insert what you're going to place on this object inside the selection so I'm going to first we do is we go and select the object then we say now insert inside the selection now it's really wants to know what must it insert so now we can go and get the picture we go to file we go to place because we want to place it into this object and I'm not going to make the mistake I made previously by selecting a raw file and it took long to load I'm going to just go to this JPEG say open and now when I draw it see what happens it's inserting it in there and the reason why it's like this it's because it's a portrait mode so I'm going to just rotate it and keep shift so I can sort of rotate at 15 degree angles so there we are if I want to make that a bit bigger or smaller I can do so so I can work independently on that image uh, if you click off here and you think oh how do I get back to that image you can go to the layers you can see that is the one and if you click this arrow you can see there's the image so if I click on the image I can go and move it again if I click on the curve I can move the entire thing control Z to get it back entire thing in that area or you could just single click or double click so if I single click and then if I double click I'm now onto the image at the back okay so if I wanted to do this one also same process select there go file place let me find another JPEG we find this one here and then I'll go there and just draw that out let me just rotate this around so it can be positioned better okay so say that's so I'm happy with that so you see each of these images now each of these letters have their own images linked to them so if I go here that one that one have their own images linked to them okay and and then of course you can move two images onto the same letter etc but I'm not going down that route now I'm going to round it off by showing you the other method so the other method is by bringing it into the layers palette so you don't have to be on a particular letter you can just be off it and you can go same thing go place we're going to find another object um, let's go and find one right of the beach okay let's take this one and I'm just going to place it and let me rotate now you'll notice here it's not uh, placing it into this letter because we haven't clicked that at all we're going to do the different technique now now let's look at this in the layers the image is above the M okay if I move this to the bottom here what affinity designer shows me is a blue line right from the left through to the right if I move it towards the right of the M but underneath it will sh show me a blue line that starts only from the M and moves this way and then I could also move it 
just on the right hand side of the M, then it will show a vertical line and there's something totally different. But I'm going to just show you the one where I drag it below the letter I want to put it into, or the curve, not the letter, but the curve, and then make it so that it, the blue line starts from the right hand side of that curve. Because that will do exactly the same as I had with the others. It will create a clipping mask. So just watch carefully. I'm going to left mouse button. If I drag it right to the bottom, you can see it just goes to the back. But now watch as I drag it to the side. Can you see what happens is that blue line sort of jumps there and it gets shorter. And when I let go there with the mouse, you see it's, it seems to be gone. But it's also done what the others have done. There's a little arrow and it's tucked it in there. So I've created that clipping mask. If I come back here now, it's exactly the same how I did it. Okay, I'm going to just take this and move it back up. So I've moved it out again. It's on its own layer. If I move it right down below, it's going to be right at the back. If I move it to the side, it's going to clip for that particular curve shape there. Okay, and that's how we get it. This might be a little bit uh, confusing as to dragging it across, but you'll get used to having it uh, drag across with that short area. If you don't like working with this particular area, then just use the insert in selection. Again, okay, then as I mentioned in the other tutorial that I did was literally took a shape like this and um, this shape in itself is not a curve yet. So you also have to convert it to curves before I can do the same thing. Now, once it's curves, I can go in. Oops, let me just go there, select that, say insert, and then go do exactly the same thing. So I, you can do it with shapes also. Okay, so there we go. Let's rotate that. Okay, so it places it in that shape. Okay, and here just finally, if you want, if you're happy, like the person I'm helping with uh, has the word mummy, if the outline is too thick, you could just go onto the object and you can thin off the stroke. Okay, make the stroke thinner. Or you could just make the stroke transparent. You click on the transparency there and it will take it away and it just leaves you with a letter. However, I think it kind of looks a bit better with a... Oops, we must be on that to select it and the color. It does look nice with stroke. You could maybe choose a, a different color, maybe a, a lighter gray or something. But to have some sort of outline definition does help. And remember, um, all of these things now that are on, on a layer, you, you can select the entire layer and then have effects that you add to it. OK, so it just becomes a object that you're working with. So with that, if you wanted to create, a, a let's say, outer shadow, uh, let's see there. Okay, so if you zoom in there now, we've created an outer shadow on that object. Remember, you must be on the curve, not on the image, because the image is at the in the curve as such. So to create this drop shadow, there you have an effect. You can add other effects onto it. So it works like any other object, whether it's a a vector that you drew or whether it's a text you draw you can add drop shadows you can do gaussian bliss all of those sort of stuff so have a fantastic day and god bless